Hey guys, so I know it's been a while since I posted a video and uh, I just wanted to post another one um, Hopefully it's not too long, but just you know a little bit of an update on the setup and uh, things to come and just some stuff I've been running so since the last time uh, I mean what I haven't I haven't really raced in the last you know four to six months that much but I've I recently been going back to track pretty frequently and trying some things and so this is just to just to share it I, to what I've been trying and most importantly I want to just point out that I've I'm now running um, the adjustable lipo uh, battery mount and uh, that's important because I've switched batteries uh, before I was running with the, the X power 560 milliamp hour battery and it was really good because 560 milliamps you could practice for like 20-25 minutes on one charge. Um, has a lot of lot of punch, a lot of power. The only problem was I had I couldn't there was no holder that would fit that large battery, so I had to just double side tape it to the chassis. So I couldn't swap batteries. I only have one battery per car. So if I practice, I had to make sure I practice before. Uh, a long time before I raced, so I had time to charge. And also, it was a really tall battery, so the the CG was higher on one side than the other. And with this this uh, this mount and this battery, 360 milliamp hour from the obviously the atomic one, the CG, as you can see, is really nice. It's really it's really really low down. Um, everything's really well placed, and uh, it just just works really well. And so I've been been running with that, and that's been it's been really good and realistically with that being said I wanted to just point out something because I've been racing against some of these GLA cars and some people are trying to say oh Atomic is there's too many upgrades you have to buy or it's too expensive or these things compared to the GLA and I said well it's absolutely not true um, first of all the Atomic car is much cheaper I think it's uh, what is it 190 US dollars for the, the kit plus the, the ESC, which is a really good price, all things considered. I mean, what you get, I mean, it's it's a, it's a really great price. You don't need any upgrades, really. I mean, recommendation would probably be, what, the steering arms, which, you know, I'm not even running it in one of my cars, the one, main one that I run. They're still the plastic ones. And they, they hold up. That's, that's fine. Um... The battery mount, which is maybe twenty dollars, uh, and and that's it. Obviously, you got to buy your arms and your springs, but that's the same with the GLA. And when you factor in that hundred and ninety, um, I think GLA is two hundred fifty, but that comes with a servo, a battery, and a receiver. Maybe not even a receiver. I think it does though. But when you factor that in, by the time you buy those three things for the Tama car. It's less than 250 I think it's probably $240. And on top of that, um, that's if you consider that you buy the Atomic Metal Gear Servo, which is a lot more durable. I've already seen uh, somebody uh, break their, their GLA stock servo like twice already. You know, those gears are plastic, so that's a, it's not, it's not going to work if you don't have a servo saver. So right there, already, you know, being able to choose whichever receiver and servo you want to run in your car I think that's I think that's a bonus I don't think that's a negative that it doesn't come with the package because you know those are available on the same website and you can uh, you can pick whatever you want so right there I think that's one one point to point out also I think the new atomic cars are coming with the aluminum chassis which I mean hey you know that I mean, look at that that's just that's beautiful right there and even if it you know, we're not always going for beauty when we're racing cars, we're going for laptops, but it's still nice to have something that's functional and looks really clean, really nice. So, I think I think that's really, that's all I want to say about that. You know, everything else speaks for itself. The car is really fast, in my opinion. Actually, you know, as far as I've seen, Tomic is still the, the best 128th four-wheel drive chassis available, hands down. Um... As far as setup goes, some things I've been working on. Um, if you notice, 
previous setups, I don't think I had these. Maybe I did. I've been running it differently recently, though. I mean, not recently, before recently. Um, I was running different springs. I think I was running those, uh, those, like, matte gold ones. Not, not, not the shiny gold ones, but the matte gold ones. Uh, springs, that is. In the back and in the front. And, uh, I've gone away from that. Now I'm running the stock silver in the back. So that's, like, softest I really want to go, but I need soft. And I'm running those, those shiny gold ones. As you can see. I don't know if it shows it. But, uh, in the front and with a lot of droop in the front. And I try to limit the droop in the back, but it's still a little bit, obviously, because um, it's so soft, it's gonna sag a little bit, but that's that's all right. The droop in the front is really so that I can throw a lot of steering at the car and not have to worry about it flipping on power. And the soft springs in the back is basically just to give me that extra rear grip so I can run that aggressive steering and one of the things I've changed is I've stopped running um, caster. I've I've gone away from that. I think that on the big turn cars, those things are pushy because they have the spool in the front and other, other factors too. You need that caster really to get the car turning. However, with so much traction we have, with, especially on RCP, can't run that caster. The car was flipping a lot, so I've 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 gone away from that. Also running. The 1.5 camber arms in the front, same in the back is still the, just the, I think, whatever the stock ones are, so zero camber, or whatever that is, so I, I don't know. Uh, what else? That's it, really. Just the, the caster, the camber, the springs, droop, oh, and the ride height. We, uh, we're running, um, like, two degrees, I mean, two millimeters or less Cam, uh, excuse me, two millimeters or less of right height. And uh, tires are the same. PN firms in the front with the glue on the sidewalls and the marker V1, 10 degrees in the rear. Um, did some testing. I think actually in the past I might have been running the Kyosho 30s in the front. But maybe, maybe on some of the setups I had the 30s in the front. But I have to go back to that. 30s without glue works. Uh, I think in the past I was running 30s with glue. Kyosho 30s with glue on the front sidewalls. Because I had so much caster and the car was flipping like crazy. So that was one of the issues I had to I had to really you know focus in on and get rid of. So, so maybe now I could probably go back to running just the, the 30s just straight up. We'll have to see. But uh. Yeah. Anyways, quick update. Um, hope you guys learned something. Uh, want to point out that you know, I'm I'm the worst when it comes to wiring things neatly, but I think I did a really good job on this chassis. So, I mean, just to give you guys an idea, what I did was just rot your wires underneath the top deck, both the servo and the ESC. Just get your, your motor wires straight up and down. Give it a little space so you can run your your battery thing like that. I like to add battery wires. I don't like having the battery go right into the ESC because I like to run these micro deans. just makes me feel a little safer and it's like a universal uh, battery type that I run with all my cars. So that, that helps too. So that's it. Um... Yeah, sorry if it was a little long. I hope you guys learned something. Um, in the future, I'm going to get be getting some more, some of the new stuff that's come out. Chassis, the new aluminum chassis. Um, maybe some of the other upgrades, maybe the diffs, uh, steering. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but we're, we're going to be getting some new stuff from Atomic. And uh, I'm going to be posting some videos about um, whether you should get that stuff. Uh, whether the upgrades are worth it, when, when to use them, and uh, and how to install them, and to adjust your car based on on those things. So that's to come soon. As soon as I get that stuff, I'm gonna do a quick turnaround since I'm off from school, and uh, we'll get those posted immediately. Okay. Hi.